Hello and welcome to Cooking with Bill. This episode comes from a point of frustration, so bear with me. Like many of you, I was busy and I stopped at Chipotle for lunch last week. I usually meal prep my meals for the week, but I've been working extended hours recently, and I just haven't had the time or energy to get much else done. So I found myself getting food out more often than normal, and wow, I forgot how expensive and pretty mediocre a lot of the stuff out there is. I paid over $13 for what was a bland mess of ingredients from the burrito artists at Chipotle. I could make this so much better, I thought. So naturally, I decided it's time to take on Chipotle and show them how it's done. Now let's get cooking with Bill. While I would normally give you a whole piece by piece lineup of the ingredients, I was editing the video and it really added a lot of time to an already long video. So these are all pretty basic ingredients, but since I filmed this the day of cooking, I already have the marinated beef ready, as well as some optional but totally excellent pickled jalapenos. Check out my video on those if you want to learn how to make them. The guacamole cups are definitely optional too, but I was really craving it and I wasn't about to spend 8 bucks on some store packed guacamole that would go off in a day or two. So let's talk about beef. Look at this big beautiful chuck steak and admire it. But also ask yourself, why chuck, and not something like skirt or hanger steak if you're going to be marinating it? Well quite simply, the only hanger steak I could find was $18 a pound, while chuck was only 8 bucks a pound, much more affordable. As you develop your cooking skills, you're more able to make quick substitutions like this while keeping the dish in line with what you want or can afford. Starting off yesterday, let's get the marinade prepared for the beef. First you're going to need beef stock, and then for some heat and smoky flavor, paprika and chipotle chili powder, a whole can of adobo chilies, salt and pepper, soy sauce, some chili paste, and fish sauce for that umami punch. Now we get everything into the blender. First, smash and peel a few cloves of garlic. No worries about chopping, the blender will take care of that for you. Next up, dump your whole can of adobo chilies in, followed by however much chili paste suits your palate. Give your spices a quick sniff and then dump those in, along with the garlic that you crushed earlier. A little bit of salt and crushed black pepper. Next up is the fish sauce. Don't be afraid of this stuff. It doesn't taste fishy, just adds some really rich umami flavor. Once you have enough of your fish sauce, add in your soy sauce as well. This is going to make the marinade saltier and a little bit more savory, and soy is a fantastic complement to beef. A little bit of beef stock to help thin this out. And now you're ready to blend. Pop the lid on, let's get this thing spinning. I really like this marinade because it has this rich smokiness from the adobo and chipotle pepper, a bit of spice from the paprika, some really nice acid and heat from that sambal olek chili paste, and a great baseline of savory flavor from the soy and the fish sauce. Once this starts to lighten up, you can take it off and adjust it for seasoning. Once your marinade is seasoned to your preference, get your steak into a gallon plastic bag and pour the marinade over. With all the marinade in the bag, squeeze out any excess air and seal the bag tightly. So the next step is to massage the meat around so that it gets completely covered. This is going in your fridge overnight. You don't want to wake up to half seasoned steak. As you can see here, the steak is really well covered in the marinade, and you're ready to pop this in the fridge and relax, at least until tomorrow, when there's plenty more cooking to be done. Hopefully you got a good night's rest, because today is where you do all the heavy lifting. Get one cup or about half a pound of black or pinto beans, pour enough water in to cover the beans with about two inches of water. Now get your onion chopped up and into two halves. One half of your onion will end up cut in half and cooked with your beans, while the other half will be diced and mixed in with the beans towards the end. You can see this one's a little messed up, no problem. We'll just use this half to put in the cooking liquid with the beans. Along with the onion, we'll also be using cilantro, garlic, and a jalapeno to flavor the cooking liquid for the beans. Keep these pieces large and rustic, because you'll need to pick them out later when the beans are done cooking. Get your beans up to a boil, lower the heat to a simmer, 
and then cover, and let cook until tender. Everybody has their own way to make rice, but here's mine. First, get a damn rice cooker. This thing was like 20 bucks. Next, wash your rice thoroughly. And finally, add water until the water level reaches about the first knuckle on your pointer finger, and your pointer finger is touching the rice. It sounds simple because it is, and it works every time for me. Okay, now to make this rice really shine. You're gonna want the zest of two whole limes and the juice of one or two, depending on how much lime you like. Also, cut up some cilantro, discarding the stems. Cut a little bit more than you think you might need, as you can always add more at the ends. You also want a couple tablespoons of butter on standby to really make this rice glossy and delicious. Dump out your rice out of your pot or rice cooker into a large bowl. I go in first with a fork to fluff the rice and let out some of the excess steam. Then go ahead and add the other ingredients and throw in a little salt as well to taste and get mixing until combined. Ah, corn. America's wonderful little cash crop. Pick yourself up a pair of these beauties and remove their exterior husks. After you shuck both your ears of corn, melt a tablespoon or two of butter and brush it on, followed by some salt and pepper. Now those are looking good. You can cook corn a few ways. Originally I was going to cook it in a pan, but I wanted to cook something else on the induction cooktop, so uh, I actually ended up throwing the corn on a sheet tray right under the broiler on high. And then I just rotated them frequently to make sure they didn't burn too much. Alright, after a few minutes under the broiler, this corn is looking good and roasted. So go ahead and start chopping off the kernels. Just be careful not to catch your finger with the knife on this. These are slippery and will try to get away from you. Once your corn is nicely roasted and cut from the cob, it's time to focus our attention back on the beans, which have been bubbling away for a while now. Discard any large pieces of your aromatics. They've already imparted all their flavor. Drain your beans, but reserve some of the cooking liquid. You may need to thin the beans out once they're mashed. Once you've strained your beans, set them aside for a minute to prepare the other ingredients. First, cook off a couple strips of bacon. This dish will need some fat, and it might as well be tasty fat. Once your bacon is rendered, add the other half of your onion into the pan and saute for a couple of minutes. After that, you're gonna wanna add your spices to taste and then toast them off a little bit to help bring out those flavors. After you do that, add in your beans, some of your reserved cooking liquid, and start mashing. The final consistency is up to you, but I like a pretty rustic, kind of chunky mash on mine. Enough about the sides though. If you're still here, then you want me to break out the big guns and start frying off this steak. Preheat your pan over medium high heat and put in a small layer of oil to coat. 
Take your first piece and lay it down in the pan. Don't be afraid of a little smoke or splatter either. Remember, the sizzle means flavor. As you're enjoying the delicious smoky smell of marinated steak frying, remember to clean any surface that touches this marinade quickly. It stains like crazy. This steak might look a little bit more blackened than you might like, but that's actually just the chilies caramelizing on the outside. The steak itself is actually about medium rare. Cut it up into bite-sized pieces and then go ahead and plate them up with all the other parts of this amazing burrito bowl. Oh, look at that. Perfectly seasoned, perfectly medium rare. I'll tell you, it took some serious willpower not to eat all of this on the spot. And there you have it. Five awesome burrito bowls to keep you going all week for a fraction of what it would cost to eat out. Wow. Well, here we are, episode four at last. I've been crazy busy recently, so unfortunately this footage sat around for a while. I tried some new stuff here with shooting a little bit more dynamically, so hopefully that was an improvement. I did the voiceovers for this over the course of like a week and a half, so if it sounds a little uneven, that's probably why. If you're interested in the cost breakdown that I was talking about for this, I'll add it down in the description, because I'm tired as hell. Anyways. Thanks for watching Cooking with Bill, and I'll catch you next time.